Thank you, sir, for enlightening us on the fact that japa and on the fact that the practice of japa and dhyana and detachment are the ways to control the vagaries of the mind. Swami, we please bless us so that we all undertake this easy Kali Yuga sadhana of Likita Nama Japa with sincerity and devotion. I wish to thank the organizers for providing us the Likita Nama Japa booklet as a part of the delicate kit. So let us start today by putting it into practice, write, writing the Likita Nama Japa and trying to complete it before we leave Parthi. Swami always says, Sarvada Sarva Kaleshu Sarvatra Hari Chintanam. Bhagwan has constantly goaded us to practice Namasmarana to redeem our lives in this Kali Yuga. May I call upon Sri Bala Ramachandran alumni from the Sri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning to help us understand how spiritual progress can be hastened with the help of Namasmarana. Sai Ram. Vamata Pita Twamiva Twamiva Bandusha Saka Twamiva Twami. Dravinam Twameva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Shri Sai Deva My dear Swami, loving pranams at your lotus feet. Respected elders on the dais, respected elders of the Sai organization and the trust, respected elders in the audience, dear brothers and sisters, my pranams at your lotus feet. When I stand here, I must first start with a submission. Because I am keenly aware that I am speaking to a group of elders who possibly joined the Sai organization even before I was born. Sister was saying that it's my job to tell you how to do Namasmarana. In fact, it should be the other way around. So let me say that I don't have this illusion that I'm here to teach Namasmarana. In fact, I see this as a great opportunity which the merciful Lord has given me to parrot and remind myself about a lot of things which he has said. I'm keenly aware of the fact that I am the first listener of whatever I am saying. So whatever I happen to speak here is purely for me. If anybody in the audience benefits from this, that is directly between you and Swami, I have nothing to do with it. When the respected All India President was telling me that this time we are keeping the meat very practical, I honestly sir, felt very, very happy. And the reason why I felt very happy is because if, as a youth, and I will take the privilege call of calling myself a youth, as a youth in the Sai organization, if you ask me, sir, what's the one wish list I have? And it's not to say that it's not there, but if you ask me what's my one wish list, the one wish list is this. I think as an organization, we need many, many, many more working models, role models of what Swami teaches. And that's where when he said practical, it really appealed to me. 
because we are not just talking about listening to some speeches but then we are talking about going back and implementing and i think the best way to inspire the youth is if we have a lot of working models i had the opportunity i still have the opportunity of seeing many of them in action from in chennai where i come from and you know in places across the country where swami has given me an opportunity to go now talking about practice you know my job involves trying to understand human behavior now when you ask the question when do people implement something practically when do people make something a habit what a little understanding we have about human behavior says that for anything to be instituted as a habit there are three components that are required one is an understanding of why i should do it for example namaskarana if namaskarana has to become a habit why should i do namaskarana i need to have a thorough understanding and conviction second how to do namaskarana but just these two are not enough why to do how to do is okay the third and the most important component i must want to do namaskarana so if you see it's why to do how to do want to do and in the light of experience of my own failures my problem has primarily been with the third one want to do but we'll try and approach you know touch each one of these why how and what so in the rest of the few minutes that i have let me quickly try and cover each of these segments first why namaskarana now to this group i don't have to do this because you already sold on this idea but i think it's an important reiteration as far as you know for us to remember what's the importance of namaskarana why namaskarana as a sadhana let me start with a very beautiful episode which possibly happened you know right there somewhere there when it was not the saikul one thol but possibly you know the old mandir which all of us so fondly remember so bhagwan comes out during darshan he walks to a group of students next to the students are a group of eminent personalities who have come here as guests and in the presence of the eminent personalities swami introduces these students or addresses these students as ms students now ms as you are all aware is master of sciences now you are being introduced as an ms student to the presence of eminent personalities now naturally you will feel proud the boys will proud there is only one problem though none of these boys are ms students <laughs> because swami's university does not have ms they are all graduate boys they are all boys from post graduation some of them possibly 12th standard nobody ms students but swami is saying ms and when you're getting something free you know you must be happy and that too in the presence of eminent personalities sometime later the eminent personalities go away swami comes back again stands in front of the same group of boys and then swami asks saying sometime before you know i came and i told that you are all ms students were you very proud when i did that no what do you say <laughs> so just kept quiet swami said what is ms swami master of sciences and then swami said nenu cheppina ms adi kaadu swami says that's not the ms which i was talking about and then swami says you know what i meant by ms students ms students ante <clears throat> ms students means march september student you write an exam in march fail write in september fail in september write in march write in march fail in september write in september fail in march punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jatare shayanam you born you die you born you die you born you die you born you die and the cycle goes on and on and on and on and on I remember the words of one of our eminent lecturers who was part of the Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning. He once asked us a question. He said, "He said, boys, tell me, what is the purpose of writing an examination? What is the purpose of writing an examination?" And we promptly said, "Sir, to pass." He said, "No." Sir, to get ranks. He said, "No." Sir, to get certificate. He said, "No." He said, "All that is a means to an end." And then he said, "The real purpose." the real purpose of writing an examination the real purpose of writing an examination is to ensure that you don't have to write again similarly the real purpose of being born is to ensure that we don't have to be born again and become a permanent part of our sweet lord if that is the purpose if that is the purpose of birth then what's the means to achieve that there are many means and we'll discuss that in as part of this conference but one of the means 
is chanting the name of the lord namasmarana now how does that connect to you know attaining mukti because mukti is you pass you know you're no longer an ms student and you're freed from this cycle of birth and death you get mukti how is namasmarana and mukti related i still remember a very beautiful way in which swami explained this in the tre brindavan swami was saying and this is swami's own words i'm slightly modifying it to suit the situation swami looked at the audience and said see suppose i say a that wise gentleman who's tall who's always beaming with joy and looks very youthful you know uh, where is that person now suppose i ask this to this audience what will happen some 100 hands will go up but suppose instead of this i say nimish uncle and then nimish uncle will immediately get up right so swami says see that's the difference between the form and the name the advantage of the name is the moment you say nimish uncle is i immediately have his attention i immediately have his presence so the most beautiful thing about the name is the moment you chant the name of the lord into your mind comes the form of the lord you get the presence of the lord you get the company of the lord company of the lord the company of the lord is sat sanga swami has many times said sat sanga is not good company sat sanga is god company company with the sat sat sanga is god company so the moment i chant the name of the lord what happens is i feel the presence of the lord and the moment you feel the presence of the lord it is sat sanga and then like swami has so many times beautifully sung sat sanga tve nisanga tvam nisanga tve nirmohatvam nirmohatve nischalatatvam nischalatatve jeevan mukti from satsanga the company of the lord comes nissangatvam or detachment nissangatve nirmohatvam all my delusion goes away nirmohatve nischalatatvam my mind becomes you know still like all elders have been saying and when that happens jeevan mukti and that is the link between namasmarana and jeevan mukti because namasmarana can hasten your path to jeevan mukti and then you no longer a ms ms march september march september march september and hence you pass now that i have made my case of why namasmarana i'll quickly go on to some three or four points on how to do namasmarana again let me tell you this is not for you this is for me you incidentally happen to be here this is something which i am doing to remind myself Now let's talk of how to do namasmarana. There are four or five quick pointers, each one with a short episode in between. You know, it happened in Swami's presence. Again in Brindavan, what happened is, you know, uh, and when you're there in Brindavan, you know, have the Sai Ramesh Hall, you have Tre Brindavan Mandir. Typically in those days, what would happen is that the moment bhajans are over in the evening, the warden would ask Swami permission to send the boys into Tre Brindavan, where Swami would spend time. in the glory you know the glorious three sessions we used to have so we used to wait for that door to open because the door in sari vishal opens and then you know you run and when the door opens my god you know everything will break loose you will find the group of boys running helter skelter because everybody wants to be close to swami and sit next to the jula in tre brindavan and that would be a normal practice now remember all this running around and jumping around is happening in the presence of the other devotees so there is one elderly gentleman who was very concerned because he saw it as lack of discipline so one day when we were inside three this gentleman approached swami and said swami you know old gentleman been with swami for a long time so says swami these boys are running swami i mean the door opens they are running so uncivilized they just running very this is a bad example so swami said nuve chappu you speak to them no you tell them and he got up and he spoke saying it's very important you should not run like this you should be a role model all this happened after all this happened this gentleman came everybody clapped for his talk he came nearby and when he was taking pad namaskar very silently swami asked him the old gentleman bandaru you spoke about they not running but tell me something after all what were they running for they were running for swami they were running because they wanted to quickly get to swami they wanted to be as close as possible to swami and then he says when you were their age when you were their age what were you running for <laughs> Now, you know there are don't get me wrong there are many messages you can take away discipline is important but one message i take away from this is when it comes to god and reaching god i think we should show a sense of urgency 
like vedana and sir very beautifully said today if namasmarana is god is going to take you to god is to hasten your progress to god the first thing to do is to not postpone it but take it up with a sense of urgency which means we start now and now doesn't mean brothers and sisters today evening we actually start at 12:40 and now and the most beautiful thing about namasmarana is you can do it even as you are listening to me talk because the brain is capable of parallel processing we talk so much about multitasking in the corporates today this is a multitasking worth doing so number 1 is start now we are talking about how second one more episode which happened somewhere in prashanthi nilayam but i am not sure where but the most beautiful thing about these things is they all happened here where we are sitting many years ago now you got so many cameras here but those were the days when cameras were in there there were a group of devotees including kasturi sir swami's biographer who was sitting in swami's presence and then what happens is that somebody brings a camera which is a rare commodity in prashanthi nilayam in these days you didn't have radio sai in those days so everybody had a desire said swami we want to take a photograph with you and luckily for them swami said yes i'll give you a photo so you had this chair like this just try and visualize this picture and you have you know the uh, devotees all gathered around swami for the photograph for the group photo but there was a basic problem the basic problem was who will take the photograph <laughs> because a person who takes the photograph is not going to be part of the photo and with swami you never know whether you will get a second chance so each person is looking at the other saying you go you go and finally swami said you don't go you don't go i will only go <laughs> and they said swami <laughs> swami said shut up just keep listen to what i'm saying no no musko mean shut up okay just listen to what i'm saying and they gather around swami's chair and then swami is sitting on his chair if you able to visualize exactly like he's sitting now and then swami came off the chair got them properly arranged and swami said okay so here we go 1 2 3 and tommy takes a photograph and they're all you know naturally very sad because you know it's an empty chair nothing great about you know photograph with an empty chair so take the photograph and after the photograph gets developed those were the days of negatives no digital photos you know swami by now so you know what was there in the photo can you tell me what was there in the photo what was shot was an empty chair but dear brothers and sisters what ultimately came is swami was sitting on the chair with a very amused expression on his face at the role he had imposed upon himself now when you look upon this okay by the way dear brothers and sisters this was the world's first selfie Swami is the only person who can take a selfie this way. You know the divine self taking his own photo. Can there be a bigger selfie? Self e. But in talking about the message, I think about this, and this then loving God. By the way, you want to see this photo? You pick up a copy of loving God. This photograph is there for all of us to see. Now, if you look at the message, I keep thinking, Swami, what's the purpose? Now, my own hypothesis, my own theory is, if you think about this, what did Swami do? He takes a photograph of a chair which we thought was empty. but he showed us that in the chair which we thought was empty swami was actually present and now when i look back many years ago when we miss his physical presence we used to see him here physically and when we see the same chair empty today i possibly feel through that experience swami was possibly trying to tell us bangaru no chair which you think is empty is actually empty because on every empty chair i reside it might be here in purnachandra it might be in kulvanthal it might it is in a samiti and so in a heart the so called empty chairs are never empty and i think that's very important because when i talk of namasmarana i'm talking about it in the context of bhajans nama sankirtan also i think one of the basic things in a samiti which i try and remind myself is a question to ask ourselves is when we sit in a samiti do we think the chair is empty or do we think swami is actually there and that's a question which only we can answer because if we believe swami is really there we would conduct ourselves that way the question i ask myself when i sit in in sundaram in bhajans is do i conduct myself the way i would have conducted myself if swami is really there and if i chatter i move around i jump around i get up i do things which i wouldn't do when swami is physically present what that really tells me is that i don't really believe swami is sitting there but i think what is very important to make nama sankirtan powerful in the form of bhajan is to always remember his presence so first was to start now second was to always remember his presence because no chair is empty okay now you know he is present on the chair and you are sitting for bhajans 
you sitting on the chair he is sitting on the chair you are sitting in front of him isn't it an opportunity to interact with him and i think every bhajan session gives us an opportunity to interact with him and it's a personal interaction it's a one on one interaction swami says tei 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 bamma swami says all of us you know are puppets and the bo- bo- beautiful thing about being a puppet is each puppet has a unique personalized string attached to the puppet here and he is the puppet here which means we have a direct connect with swami and we can use the direct connect to interact with him in bhajans how do you do that many ways of doing it i will share with you one thought you will come up with many more of your own so for example you know bhajans can become a routine or bhajans can actually become a means of interaction of talking to swami in your mind and nobody will be aware of that conversation except you it will be a highly personalized conversation for example suppose you are sitting in your samiti and the lead singer and the most beautiful thing about sai bhajan system is everybody sings every line if you think about a 3 minute bhajan you must remember the lead singer sings only for 1 and 1/2 minutes the other 1 and 1/2 minutes we sing think about it that's a beauty of the sai system of you know bhajans so in those 1 and 1/2 minutes that you get when the lead singer sings for example the bhajan anandamaya bhagwan he prema maya bhagwan this can become a unique opportunity to interact with them this is just an example for example i can think of it this way i'm very upset with swami so i can say anandamaya bhagwan swami you're full of joy he prema maya bhagwan you're full of joy you're full of love how will you understand my pain i'm aam aadmi how will you understand my pain you know i'm starting on a very lib- rebellious note ओ भगवान हेलो आर यू लिसनिंग टू मी साई भगवान फॉर गॉड सेक प्लीज स्टॉप रीडिंग दोस लेटर्स आनंदमय भगवान नॉट लिसनिंग हे प्रेममय भगवान आई एम रिमाइंडिंग अबाउट इज जेडी प्रेममय ही स्टिल डजंट लिसन नाउ आई से माय गॉड इज नॉट लिसनिंग या सो आई हैव रियली रेज माय वॉइस हे करुणानिधे prabhu sai ram still not listening now i start pleading kripa nide dinom ke pran even now i am saying you, it is your job to be kind to me kripa nide dinom ke pran you are not doing your job still not working now finally i am saying no i have really plead with him le lo prabhu mujhe शरण लगा दो ले लो प्रभु मुझे शरण लगा दो स्टिल डजेंट लिसन ही इज इन अ ग्रेट मूड टुडे चेस डज नॉट वांट टू लिसन टू मी बट यू नो व्हाट आई हैव डन बाय देन मेंटली आई हैव मूड 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 आई हैव गॉन ऑन टू द डायस आई एम सिटिंग राइट नेक्स्ट टू स्वामीस पोडियम दैट यू नो दैट दैट प्लेटफार्म दैट यू सी देयर आई एम विद इन स्ट्राइकिंग डिस्टेंस ऑफ स्वामी nothing works with him i know one thing which will work you know what it is remind him that he is the mother and i am the child when nothing works in the last line like i would plead with my mother i hold his chin and then i say mujhe daya karo bhagwan mujhe kripa karo bhagwan and then the merciful lord will respond will he not so this is just an example you can make your own story now imagine if i try and do that with a sense of application in every bhajan session i can give you hundreds of examples you know what will happen brothers and sisters suddenly a bhajan session which looks routine things like aarti which we sing daily and familiarity breeds contempt will suddenly become very meaningful because we will see each of these as an imp- opportunity to interact with him and speak to him and imagine when you say swami sai you know swami is a habit of turning you know you can actually imagine that he'll turn and in reality i think he will turn so first was start now second was always remember his presence third was interact with him the fourth is this you know let me tell you a story which swami used to tell us once the great emperor akbar was out on the streets in a palanquin sitting in the palanquin along with him was tansen the great singer who was one of the navratnas and while they were going through the streets what suddenly happened is there was a beggar saint outside who was singing a beautiful song 
and when he sang that beautiful beautiful song the emperor akbar was so moved that tears of joy automatically came from his eyes and he was not even able to speak he was just choked later when they went back to the palace akbar sits with tansen and tells him tansen you are a really great singer but i must tell you something today so many times you have sung and when you have sung i have really enjoyed it but i must tell you the way the beggar saint we heard today in the street the way the beggar saints singing touched my heart and brought tears your singing has never done that now tansen knows who the beggar saint is and i'll tell you who the beggar saint is swami told us the beggar saint was actually sant haridas who's actually the guru of tansen so what happens is tansen says of so what did the emperor say he says your singing you no know, doesn't bring tear to the eyes but his singing really touched my heart and then tansen says janampana emperor of course his tears his singing will bring tears to your eyes why because these are swami's own words swami then said you know emperor the difference is main ga raha hu main ga raha hu har din मैं गा रहा हूं हर दिन दिल्ली की बादशाह के लिए आई सिंग डेली टू प्लीज द बादशाह एम्पर ऑफ डेली विच इज यू मैं गा रहा हूं हर दिन दिल्ली की बादशाह के लिए लेकिन वो गा रहा है दिन रात दुनिया की बादशाह के लिए ही सिंग्स डे एंड नाइट टू प्लीज द वन हु इज द मास्टर ऑफ ऑल द यूनिवर्सिस एंड देन स्वामी से फर्क तो पड़ेगा ही there will be a difference so i think the next thing is okay i am singing i am interacting with him but when i sing whom do i sing for this is not just for the lead singer for everybody when i come to the samiti i sing to relate only to him i do namasmarana i do bhajans only to strengthen my relationship with swami nothing else without any thought of the impact that i am making on anybody else if that happens that's incidental my job is to relate only to him so start now always remember his presence interact with him relate only to him i'm la- i'm down to my last two points before i get the chit from brother <laughs> yeah so i must quickly talk about this one experience you know what happened is in those golden days swami is a chancellor of the university he still is so swami you know when the results were declared in the college what would happen is first the results would go to swami in the interview room swami would see the results as the chancellor and also as swami he would bless the results and then he would we would put it up on the notice board now typically this would happen during darshan time so what happens is for you to understand the sequence swami sees the result then darshan and bhajan happens after that only when we go only to the hostel no we put up the results which means there's a lag between swami seeing the results and we seeing the results and sometimes what swami would do is he would come out and he would leak the results <laughs> he would start telling people what grades they got So Swami just comes. We have a different grading system in the institute now, but in those days we had a five-point grade system. So Swami comes. There were two boys sitting next to each other. One of these boys is a brilliant student, expecting a gold medal. The other one is a MS student. <laughs> you know, lucky if I pass. Swami goes first to the MS kind of student, the guy who is fifty-fifty, and tells him, "I saw the results. You got O grade." no this guy is not able to believe because who is outstanding which is the highest grade there is no chance only swami might be saying it this is the doubt this is the all that will work for arjuna not for him <laughs> swami o grade <laughs> no chance but swami is saying it she is very happy didn't know how to respond then he looks at the boy who is the gold medal aspirant and then tells him i saw your result you failed <laughs> no chance but swami is saying it both these guys go back to the institute they look at the notice board and dear brothers and sisters what do you think they saw on the notice board the results were exactly the opposite swami said that boy 50 50 boy got o grade he actually failed swami said fail for whom for the boy who studies well but he got o grade now this boy who was expecting to anyway fail and unnecessarily swami gave him an expectation of o grade was now depressed and sitting for darshan now swami comes to him and swami says bangaru you saw the result said yes swami o oh, grade no <laughs> no this is an unnecessary taunt <laughs> said no swami i failed swami said are you power me fail ah you failed swami said okay what what are you studying swami mba swami 
Swami said, what's the full form of MBA? Dangerous question. Because one Swami says, MBA means Mad Boys Association. <laughs> so, you never know what Swami is up to. But this boy said, Swami, Master of Business Administration. And Swami said, no. Swami said, no. Swami said, that's not what I meant by MBA. And here, mark my words, that's what Swami said. And then Swami goes on to say, he says, Bangaru, MBA. MBA means mind on Baba always. Mind on Baba always is real MBA. And after saying this, Swami went on to clarify saying, Bangaru, in that MBA, no, you got O grade, he failed. There's a great sage called Ramadas in Badrachalam in Andhra who sang, Kalalo ni namasmarana Maruva chakani tanri Pilejina palukame mi Paluke bangara maena Paluke bangara maena Paluke bangara maena Kodanda pani paluke bangara mayena Paluke bangara maye pilachina paluka vemi Kalaloni namas marana maruva chakani tanri paluke He says, Rama, dear father, I have not forgotten your name even in my dream. Mind on Baba always. Which means Namasmarana is not something which I do only for bhajan. Namasmarana is an incessant activity like they have, the elders have been telling us, like Swami told us, Soham, 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 Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Sai Ram, becomes a part of my breath and like brother said, it actually becomes Ajapa Japa. Which brings me to the last point. Now I have talked about how to do. We have talked about why to do. But you know my biggest problem has been after knowing all this, no? Somehow there are days when I don't want to do. I don't know how you deal with it and it will be interesting to know how you do. But let me tell you something which I try on those days when I don't want to do. If I have to be a bit colloquial, those days when I want to bunk bhajans. On those days, you know, when I just don't feel like doing Namasmarana. So let me share with you and conclude with an experience. And what gives me goosebumps is the fact that possibly this experience happened here. You know, right behind us. Possibly, I don't know, but must have. You know, November 23rd, just coming, 22nd of November, convocation in those days, and then in the evening, the boys would present a drama, you know, before Swami. Who is this drama presented for? For Swami. But who directs the drama? Swami. Who chooses the actors? Swami. Who finalizes the story? Swami. In the end, who comes to watch it? Swami. You know, very unique. But the point is, no, he would be there for every session. And that particular year, the story written, I'll tell you the gist. The gist was like this. There's a Sai student who's come to study in Swami's college. And then what happens is he goes back on vacation. When he goes back on vacation, he wants to share with all his old classmates in school, in his hometown, the good lessons of human values he's learnt and correct them and bring them onto the right path. That was his noble intention. But what happens in the story? When he goes and tries to correct these boys, instead of the boys, he correcting the boys, the boys confuse him. So he's trying to tell one of his old classmates, stop smoking, you know, stop drinking. But instead, that boy confuses him, saying, what? There's no God only. And he gets confused. Now that's the scene, that in the middle. Now Swami would watch this scene, and Swami had named this scene, Rowdy scene. And Swami would watch the scene so intently, and once in the practice sessions, what actually happened is, I'm told that Swami just walked up to the stage and spoke to that boy who was playing the role of a Sai student saying, Buddhi le da Niku, you have no brains. Huh? He's telling you there's no God, you're just keeping quiet. You should tell A, B, C, D to him. And that boy is looking at Swami saying, Swami, it's my dialogue, Swami. <laughs> I've been asked to speak only this, but Swami is responding as though it really is happening. As though the Sai student is really being confused by the other people and misled by the other people. And Swami is responding very seriously. That this kept on happening. Now, after this, what happened is, you know, each time the scene comes, you know, Swami would kind of ring the handkerchief, you know, like, you know, that scared child who wants to see the horror scene, but is still, you know, is scared. It was a very different Swami that, you know, the students saw. And all this went on. Finally, what happened is, when the drama was finally staged, and I think the President of India, I think, was the chief guest, 
what happened is Swami is sitting next to the President of India. Swami is the chief guest and the uh, President is the guest of honor. And when the rowdy scene came, Swami immediately turned towards the President and said, Swami says, this is only temporary. <laughs> Later on, no, he will convince them. Don't worry. Don't worry. The President is thinking, Swami, why should I worry? <laughs> But so sweetly, you know, it's very childlike. Swami says, don't worry, it's only temporary. The boys are watching all this. And finally, after the drama, the boys went up to Swami and then asked him, saying, Swami, it was a very different Swami that you're seeing. Saying, Swami, you know the story. You are not just the sutradhar of this drama, Swami. You are Maya Nataka Sutradhari. But why were you so nervous at that point of time? In the rowdy scene, when that... Sai youth was getting misguided. Why were you so nervous, Swami? And then Swami shares what was running through his mind. And brothers and sisters, this is the most important thing. Don't miss this part. Because this is that one sentence or word of Swami which should possibly come to our mind each time. No, we don't want to do. No, This is one thing which should possibly can help us. They were asking Swami, Swami, why did you do this? And then Swami says, <coughs> Adikadu Bangaru. See, it's not that Bangaru. You know, I know it is drama. I know it is only drama. But even in a drama, no? Even in a drama, no? Swami cannot see Swami's children failing. Even in a drama, I cannot see my children fail. That means two things. One is that he will, he will never allow us to fail. He can say all this, okay? We know he's all-powerful. He can move mountains for us and he will. I know that. But the other message also is that we have a responsibility. I think the most important part is Swami has said Namasmarana, Swami has said practice all this. I think it is our responsibility to make our life His message by adhering to this teaching of Namasmarana. <laughs> so let me now conclude. So if you followed all the points, let me quickly recap. We said how to do Namasmarana. We said message number one is to start now and not later. Next is Always remember his presence. Third is, use the opportunity when he's sitting on the chair to interact with him. It's not an empty chair, so interact with him. Next is, relate only to him. Always chant his name, mind on Baba, always. And finally, make your life his message. And if you have followed it closely, basically what we are saying is, S for start now, A for always remember his presence, I for interact with him, R for relate only to him. Next two alphabets, you must be able to tell me. A for always chant his name. And M, make your life his message. Which means the way to Sai Ram is Sai Ram. With these words, whatever I have said, I offer at Swami's lotus feet, right, wrong, everything, because it all belongs to him. Uh, our brothers here, Brother Gopi has actually put together a very beautiful uh, audio clip where Swami talks about Namasmarana. So, at the end of the day, I think, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just that parrot who's parroting what Vasami has said. Let's now listen to his master's voice. And I think that will sum up Namasmarana for us. I offer everything which I've said at Swami's lotus feet. Jai Sai Ram. Divyatma Surupalara. Jagat Tantai Kudanu. Bhagavat Nama Nisvarin Tine Tunti Vadu. Lene Ledu. In this whole world, there are none who don't chant his name. In one form or other, he thinks of God. At least they will have their children named after divine. At least he will be calling his friends who bear the names of gods. All names are divine. All forms are His. All names are His. 